ASEC uh, Glenda Ruloba from uh, Operations Statutory. We also have Ardi Tomas. Uh, he is the Regional Director of uh, NCR. Of course, we have uh, Ardi uh, Almeda. We have Director Wayne from Financial Management uh, Service. Uh, Director uh, Gemma Gabuya from uh, the Four Ps and uh, ASEC uh, Joyce uh, Niwani. Yeah. So to start with, also I would like to mention that uh, there are also some uh, USEC and directors uh, joining us, but uh, through, uh, through the Zoom. They have, wa they have wanted to be here, but uh, because of uh, the social distancing, so... And I would like to make mention uh, Andy Turenzi, uh, Yusek Goodmalin, Yusek Pahe, Asek Makalala, Director Mabuyog, Director Armas, Director Nabiamos, Director Makuto, and uh, Attorney Takorda. So to start with, the COVID-19 pandemic has uh, negatively affected the socioeconomic well-being of uh, Filipino families nationwide. The Social Amelioration Program, or SAP, implemented by several national government agencies, became the primary means to assist the most deprived families during crisis. Hence, the purpose of this presentation is to discuss the overall process and actual execution of the SAP and the status of the SWD SAP performance Allow me to begin by presenting the basis of a program in which each operationalization was anchored upon. On the overview, in accordance with uh, Section 4C of Republic Act Number 11469, or the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act, an emergency subsidy is to be provided to around 18 million low-income households or families that shall amount to 5,000 pesos to 8,000 pesos based on the regional minimum wage rate per month in a span of two months. And as a part of the program, through the DSWD Assistance to Individual in Crisis Situations, or AIX, this became the agency's primary means to mitigate the adverse financial effects of the health emergency measures that were imposed to curb the spread of COVID-19 in the country. Now on the timeline. Although the said law was passed on March 24, the Interagency Technical Working Group on SAP, composed of DBM, DOF, DOLE, DTI, DA, DILG, and DSWD as the chairperson, convened on March 18, to already draft the operational guidelines of the execution of SAF, or the Joint Memorandum Circular Number 1 Series of 2020, as directed by the IATF IED through Resolution Number 13. Initially, the members agreed that the assistance will be given to all Filipinos in the form of family food packs to ensure that the community quarantine measures are strictly observed and in consideration that the COVID-19 pandemic has affected the whole populations. This was later changed to a combination of in-kind and monetary assistance in the later meeting. However, the plan was completely revised to meet the prescribed provisions of Republic Act 11469 having been finalized and signed on March 28. On March 30, the IATF IED approved its content through IATF Resolution Number 16, prompting the commencement of the program's executions. To further guide LGUs, the DSWD issued several memorandum circulars to supplement the necessary details on the implementation of SAP and respond to the different realities on the ground. In particular, Memorandum Circular Number 9, or the Omnibus Guidelines, was crafted to harmonize Memorandum Circular Number 4, 6, 7, which serves as a reference of LGUs regarding the enactment of SAF. 
On the first trans of SAF, the major responsibility of the DSWD during the first trans of the SAF was the transfer of the funds to the LGUs. The program was intended to assist the LGUs and provide them the necessary resources in distributing the much needed emergency subsidy to the 18 million low income families. As early as March 31, the DSWD started to distribute the social amelioration card or SAC forms to some LGUs and this has provided an opportunity for them to determine the eligible beneficiaries in their areas based on indicative allocations set by economic cluster team. On April 2, the DBM released an initial budget amounting to 100 billion pesos to the DSWD. This was followed by another 96 billion pesos released on April 16. As early as April 3, the department, through its field offices, started to transfer funds to LGUs upon the submission of the signed memorandum of agreement and project proposal. The said requirements are in compliance with the Commission on Audit Memorandum Circular Number 94-013 and Memorandum Circular 12-001. Upon receipt of the initial 100 billion peso budget on April 2, the DSWD central office in the afternoon immediately downloaded to field office NCR its fund for the social amelioration program. From April 3 to 5, some 3.5 million four fees beneficiaries were the first to receive the emergency subsidy, which was deposited to their cash cards accounts. Also, on April 3, a day after the release of SAF funds, payouts of the first trans of the emergency subsidy started in some areas in the national capital region. LGUs determined the eligible, eligible SAP beneficiaries based on GMC number one. Kindly refer to the table presented on the screen. For the breakdown of the 1,526 LGUs, which were transferred with funds from April 3 until May 11. Most number of LGUs recipient, numbering 331 LGUs, received the funds on April 8. Additional funds were transferred to 17 LGUs in Region 1 on April 29. Some 13 LGUs in BARM were also transferred with funds by May 11. On the other hand, the DSWD conducted direct payouts in 99 LGUs in the Bangsa, Bangsa Moro Autonomous Region in Muslim Mindanao or BARMM, in Talusan, Sambuanga Sibugay, in Dabao City, and in President Quirino Sultan Kudarat. The DSWD's transfer of funds and the LGU's subsequent conduct of payouts continued throughout the month of April. Following the issuance of DSWD MC9, or the Omnibus Guidelines on SAP, the DSWD adopted post-validation scheme and the on-site filling up of SAC forms during the conduct of the payouts. This mechanism were undertaken in an effort to fast-track the LGU's distribution of emergency subsidy and to respond to the calls of local government officials on the seemingly complicated procedures prescribed in previous DSWD guidelines. The DILG then imposed an April 30 deadline to the LGUs to complete the emergency subsidy distribution in their areas and was later extended to May 10. By May 11, a total of 440 LGUs had yet to finish their payouts. The DSWD, upon the request of the LGUs for extension, allowed the distribution of aid to continue beyond the said deadlines. In our desire 
to ensure that 100 billion pesos intended for the 18 million low-income families are provided with needed cash assistance from the government. On the challenges encountered with the novelty of this emergency, accompanied by the need for an immediate action on the part of the government, the enactment of social amelioration program is not without its challenges. The issue to be enumerated were main factors in the delay of the distribution of the emergency subsidy. One of which is the stringent validation process of LGUs in determining the eligible beneficiaries, amplified by the grievances received from the waitlisted families, caused the delay in the delivery of aid. Additionally, the sub-implementers had difficult time in delivering the subsidy in geographically isolated and disadvantaged areas, particularly in the island municipalities and barangays, which need sea and air transportation support in order to distribute cash aid. In connection to this, the need for sub-implementers generally composed of local social welfare development officers, employees of LGUs, special disbursing officers, and personnel of DSWD field officers to observe the 14-day quarantine once exposed to probable and suspected COVID-19 cases cause the postponement of the actual delivery of the subsidy. In fact, 1,324 of our personnel had to undergo self-quarantine from March to June, 19 of whom were found to be COVID-19 positive. Concomitantly, security threats posed by the presence of rebel forces, particularly the communist terrorist group or Muslim clan wars, otherwise known as RIDO, also led to the postponement of scheduled distribution of emergency subsidy in the area. This endangered the security and safety of the sub-implementers like what had happened in Aurora, Dabao City, Masbate, and Negros Occidental, where AFP and PNP personnel assisting in the distribution of SAP were ambushed, and unfortunately, some were killed and wounded. Threats and intimidations from disgruntled individuals caused fears among SAP implementers and hindered the smooth distribution of the subsidy. With the increasing number of families already provided with emergency subsidy, the DSWD turned most of its effort on the submission of LGU's liquidation reports, as this was the requirement based on existing auditory, auditing rules. To date, 1,214 out of 1,526 LGU's have completed and submitted their liquidation reports to the DSWD. Meanwhile, in the post-validation phase, the DSWD reviewed the eligibility of the first trans beneficiaries and the possible duplication of assistance through a cross-matching of databases of sub-implementing agencies. With the num numerous grievances received by the DSWD, the inclusion of waitlisted or also known as left out families in the second tranche was advocated by the department. They are the eligible beneficiaries based on the law, as cited in GMC number one and DSWD memorandum circulars number nine above the 18 million target. This was supported by the DAILG with its Memorandum Circular 2020-086, directing LGUs to submit the identified waitlisted families on May 21. In order to further facilitate the provision of SAP, the department partnered with DICT, USAID, and Developers Connect Philippines, or DEVCON, and created Relief Agad application which seeks to expedite 
the capture of SOC data. The DSWD also aims to utilize digital payment schemes to aid in the expeditious distribution emergency subsidy through contactless transactions. On May 12, in his talk to the people, President Duterte directed DSWD to lead the distribution of the second tranche of SAP with the support of the Armed Forces of the Philippines and the Philippine National Police. The Executive Secretary issued a memorandum on May 22 defining the target beneficiaries to be accommodated for the second runs. Following this directive, the crafting of the Joint Memorandum Circular No. 2 stating the operational enactment of SAP for the second runs was facilitated through several meetings with the concerned agencies from May 27 to June 8. The circulars were signed on June 9 and was posted on the official gazette on June 11, prompting its effectivity. On the date of its publication, DSWD provided the emergency subsidy to poor fees beneficiaries residing in areas declared and enumerated in Executive Order Number 112 and Memorandum of Executive Secretary dated April 30 and May 2, respectively. With regard to the SAP accomplishment, the data to be reflected are as of June 21. For the second tranche, we have already started providing aid to poor fees and wait-listed family beneficiaries. We are anticipating that the conduct of payouts shall be amplified in the following days through house-to-house -house distribution, big venue payouts, and digital platforms. For the first tranche, as shown on the screen, the DSWD has provided the subsidy to 17.6 million families, utilizing 99.6 billion pesos. 1,560 out of 1,628 LGUs attained 100% accomplishment rate with the respective payouts. In relation to the provision of the emergency subsidy through SAP, the agency operations center of DSWD for COVID-19 was also activated. Excuse me po, Yusek uh, uh, Pamonag. Maaari po bang isubmit, isumit, isumit po ninyo yung inyong presentation sa committee ito upang uh, mabigyan po ng kopya lahat ng miyembro at uh, puputuling ko na rin po yung uh, inyong presentation upang po marinig natin yung uh, yung tinig ni Congresswoman Nina Taduran na nagre-representa po sa isa po sa mga main authors natin ng House Resolution ng uh, dalawang House Resolution na naibigay na sa committee ito na si Congressman Eric Yap. Ito pong House Resolution na to ay 82 House Resolution 823 Resolution calling for an aid in inquiry in aid of legislation on the alleged anomalies, corruption in the implementation of the social amelioration program. Mr. Chairman? Yes, uh, Vice Chairman Devensor. Um, Mr. Chairman, uh, maybe just to wrap up, uh, can we give the Undersecretary two minutes just to, yung highlights lang po nung kanya mga binanggit, para lang po malinaw yung mga puntos nung Yusek, kanyang... Uh, kaya po ba ng dalawang minuto para po yung highlights lang po, po ninyo? Do Yes, I can do that. I, I, Sige po. I still have uh, four uh, pages, but uh, Sige po. Dalawang minuto I could po manage na additional uh, usage. Yes. As uh, I was uh, mentioning earlier, that uh, we have activated the uh, Agency Operations Center. Uh, also, we established a website that provides link to uh, post the names of uh, SAP beneficiaries for uh, transparency. And also, uh, we have established a grievance red redress mechanism to respond for the uh, complaints. And the last slide would show other programs of uh, 
DSWD in response to COVID-19 crisis. They are as uh, shown on the screen. We have the social pension for uh, indigent senior citizen, uh, the regular AX program. We have uh, the provision of family food packs and uh, the online counseling uh, psychosocial uh, services. All of these were modified, of course, uh, in view of the uh, COVID-19. Uh, Next slide. Next slide. So in closing, uh, we would like to say uh, uh, we thank you all for giving us this opportunity, of course, uh, to uh, share our side. Uh, we want to express our appreciations and acknowledgement to our partner agencies uh, who never faltered nor wavered in uh, our, their seriousness to uh, serve our countrymen. Isang magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat and uh, magandang uh, hapon and thank you very much po. Mr. Chairman. Maraming salamat, uh, Yusek. Yes, uh, Vice Chairman Mike Defensor. Before the Honorable Taduran uh, takes her time, Mr. Chairman, because kanina po sa presentation ng DSWD, ang tinuturo po yung LGU. Eh, meron po mga nag-text po kaagad eh, tungkol po doon na ang stringent measures galing po sa kanila hindi sa DSWD. So, at a proper time, Mr. Chairman, just to be fair to the LGUs, uh, mag-present din po sila at himayin natin kung ano talaga yung naging problema. Just to be fair, baka nanunod po yung mga mayors po natin, eh nakakaya naman po na hindi natin binigyan ng reaksyon yung kanyang message natin. Mr. Chairman. Sige po. Mr. Uh, yes, Mr. Speaker. In the same manner that we're going to listen to a number of members of Congress na, you know, to interpolate, uh, to discuss with you ano naging problema, pwede ko rin bang balik rin for the next hearing? Sa next hearing, sir, kung pwede, instead na tanungin namin kayo sa problema or i-grill namin, kayo na mag-present kung ano naging problema. We all understand that in hindsight, uh, we're all geniuses. I'll give you an example. Isang pagkakamali ng Congress, tinake namin hook, line, and sinker yung statistics na 18 million Filipino families. Kung mauulit to at God forbid na mauulit to, individuals na gagawin namin, hindi pamilya, kasi nakagulo pa na pamilya na kalagay. But if we are man enough, and the women uh, members of Congress are women enough to admit this, uh, I'd also like the SW to, to do the same. Like for me, the original sin is nung ayon yung magbigay ng form sa bawat bahay, eh, kaya hindi nyo na-assess kung sino may kailangan o hindi. But it's up to you if you want to look at that as a mistake or not. But we have to look back and say, anong mali? Para kung biglang mangyari to ulit sa future, di ba? alam na natin kung uh, ha how we can uh, address it. May doomsday uh, button tayo ng paano mag-respond doon. No? So I think that would prevent more grilling or more arguing on contentious uh, uh, points. But for today, may mga ilang membro na nakapila. Of course, they'd like to make their points muna. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Maraming salamat po sa paalala at uh, payo ni Speaker Cayetano. At uh, kanina po ay pinakikinggan po namin, Yusek, yung inyo pong uh, magandang presentation. At uh, nakita naman natin marami rin kayong programa na naipamigay. Ngunit uh, paghandaan rin po sana natin sa susunod na hearing na... Isa-isahin po natin yung mga step ng uh, sistema ang inyong ginawa at kayo na po ang maglahad sa amin kung saan kayo nahirapan, saan kayo nagkaroon ng problema upang uh, sa mga susunod po, sabi nga sana wala na pero mahirap sa tao yung hindi handa. Kaya sa susunod na magkaproblema tayo, kung ano man yung problema darating, mas maayos na po sana at pangkalhata na yung sistema po natin, Yusek. Ngayon po ay uh, bago kakilalanin, uh, ang ating uh, principal author ng uh, ang kumakatawan sa ating principal author ng House Resolution 823 ay uh, ipagbibigay alam ko lang po sa lahat na meron po tayong pito pa na natitira na nakalista upang magtanong at lahat po ay bibigyan natin ng tiga-tigatlong minuto na panahon upang magtanong dahil po uh, Sa kaalaman na ng lahat, nakahanda na po si Congresswoman Nina Tadura ng AXCIS. 
Yan po ay uh, isa rin sa mga sumbungan ng bayan. Pakinggan po natin ang uh, pananalita ni Congressman Nina mula sa AXAAS mula po siyempre sa puso ni Congressman Eric Yap. Uh, maraming salamat po sa inyo, uh, Mr. Chair, Kuya Jose Alvarado, sa ating uh, very hardworking speaker, Alan Peter Cayetano, Majority Floor Leader, Martin Romualdez, and our Deputy Speaker, El Rey Villafuerte. Steam colleagues, good afternoon. I have the honor to sponsor House Resolution Number 823, Resolution Calling for an Inquiry in Aid of Legislation on the Alleged Anomalies, Corruption in the Implementation of the Social Amelioration Program filed by my colleague, Honorable Eric Goyap. With the implementation of enhanced community quarantine throughout Luzon and other regions in the country to control the spread of the 2019 coronavirus disease or COVID-19, many families lost their jobs and livelihood. As such, many of those in the poor, vulnerable, and marginalized sectors are put at a greater risk as their means for their day-to-day -day survival was halted. In response, the government implemented the Social Amelioration Program, a cash emergency subsidy program to provide the basic necessities and tool for the recovery and rehabilitation for the 18 million Filipino families whose lives are greatly affected by the community quarantine. But even after the ECQ has been lifted in many parts of the country, there are still reports that many eligible sub-beneficiaries have not received their emergency cash aid for the two-month duration of ECQ. These reports were already forwarded to the in Department of Interior and Local Government and their respective local government units. Supposed beneficiaries who were unable to receive the subsidy have been robbed twice over. First, when they lost their income due to the pandemic, and now, when their benefits were stolen by unscrupulous government personnel. At a time when our people are in dire need of help, this kind of thievery must not be tolerated. A public office is a public trust. This is true from the highest position and downwards. Government personnel entrusted with the people's money must always ensure that it is spent for the intended purpose. Any deviation must and should be dealt with severely. We shall not turn a blind eye on the alleged anomalies or corruption issues surrounding the distribution of SAP. It is under the law that beneficiaries receive full and complete amount. Kasi marami po kaming natatanggap na mga reklamo na hindi kompleto yung naibigay sa ating mga beneficiaries. Once we find supporting evidence that there are local officials conniving in mishandling SAP funds, we will take appropriate measures to hold them accountable. Those in public service only for their personal interests have no place in the government. Marami pong salamat, Mr. Chair. Maraming salamat, Congresswoman Nina Taduran. Kaya pala siya pinagbasa ni Congressman Eric Yap ay para kaming hinihihili dito sa kanyang napakagandang boses. <laughs> Maraming salamat sa po, Mr. Chair. Sa kalaman po Chair. ng lahat ay meron pa pong isang House Resolution na napadala dito sa committee ito. Ito po ay House Resolution 870 authored by Enrico Aristotel Augmentado. Resolution seeking for an investigation on social amelioration program provided for under Republic Act 11469, otherwise known as the Bayanihan to Hilas One Act. At meron rin pong uh, isa pang uh, House Resolution number 973, 
authored by our beloved speaker Alan Cayetano, Deputy Speaker El Rey Villapuerte, Chairman Eric Yap, Chairman Bambol Tolentino, Deputy Speaker Rani Abu, Deputy Speaker Dan Fernandez, Deputy Speaker Neptali Gonzalez, Congresswoman Crystal Bagat Singh, Congresswoman Ruth Hernandez at Congressman Manny Lopez, Resolution calling for appropriate House committees to investigate, review, and assess in aid of legislation the delay in the provision of the social amelioration measures by the Department of Social Welfare and Development pursuant to the Republic Act 11469 or the Bayanihan to Heal as One Act. Uh, hindi pa po ito nare-refer sa aming committee pero uh, tinake note na rin po ng, uh, ng Committee on Good Government and Public Accountability or ng Blue Ribbon Committee ang resolusyong ito sapagkat uh, hinihintay rin po natin ang referral po ng resolusyong ito. And without further ado, uh, pakinggan po natin ang, ang uh, linyada ng mga katanungan ng isa sa mga iniidolo sa Kongreso, Congressman, Deputy Speaker, El Rey Villapuerte. Thank you, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> uh, I just like to reiterate the purpose of the main purpose of this hearing is really not to point fingers but to provide solutions. No? Mr. Chair, I will be quick with my questions because I know the time is based on questioning. So, uh, I would like to direct this question to uh, the head of the SAP of the SWD, Mr. Chair. Ang tanong ko, yung, God forbid, sana hindi na po maulit ito, but una kong tanong, yung social amelioration card o yung SAC form ba, uh, do you think tama ba po itong ginawa nyo na nilagyan ng barcode at napakaraming requ requirements, Mr. Chair? The SWD, please answer. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yung uh, barcode na nakalagay sa SAC kasi would help us, uh, of course, identify yung uh, tao and to prevent yung duplication na maari pang gumamit. So that is the reason why distinct yung barcode ng isa't isa and we will know immediately kung yung barcode ba yun o kung yung SAP ba na yun is na-share sa iba, ibang mga uh, kalapit na probinsya. <coughs> so, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, ang point ko kasi is while the objective intention is good na may security, ang tanong ko po, Mr. Chair, ito ba ay nakatulong o nakadelay? Kasi Opo. sa tingin ko po, nakadelay dahil ang LGU naman na sinasabi, this is unnecessary, nahirapan po silang mag-Xerox, nung panahon ng COVID, wala naman silang printer, walang ano. Para sa akin, this is one cause of delay. So my question, Mr. Chair, is while the objective of the barcode is good, ang tanong ko po is nakatulong ba to para mapabilis? Hmm. Uh, pakisagot po, ang uh, isasagot nyo lang po, uh, Undersecretary, ay nakapagpabilis ba siya o 